So we were checking into our flight at LAX to fly to Barcelona when the person at the ticket counter did this. The dreaded sound of the ruler. She, she measured our bags and was about to charge us $600 in one direction to fly our bikes over. We managed to avoid it, thankfully, but that gave me the idea of sharing some bike travel tips, flying with your bike if you're going abroad, that we've learned over the years and hopefully will help you out on your bike travel. The first one, let's get this one out of the way, is to definitely know your airline's policy. Flying to Spain, we took Delta, which in the last few years has become more bike friendly. And it's in their policy that bikes don't incur any extra fees. This is relatively new and a lot of the people that work on the ground aren't aware of these policies. So definitely print it out, have it on your phone and be ready to have a friendly discussion. Uh, thankfully, Laura brought this up and the person at the counter spoke with uh, her manager. And at the end of the day, we were charged uh, nothing extra for flying with our bike, just the typical check baggage fee, which I think is like 30 or $40. The next big tip is to practice assembling and disassembling your bike at home using the tools that you're gonna have with you at your destination. For example, you don't wanna practice taking your bike apart and putting it back together with shop tools, but instead the actual multi-tools or whatever tools you're gonna bring with you. I've made the mistake in the past before where I've practiced what I needed to do with a tool like this, you know, kind of a home or shop tool. But once I got to my destination, I was trying to do it with a tool like this. And on most multi-tools, uh, often the Allen head isn't long enough to get into certain nooks and crannies. Probably the one that is most tricky is the bolt head that attaches your rear derailleur to the dropout. Depending on the rear derailleur, if you have SRAM, uh, they tend to be fairly recessed and oftentimes an Allen head on a multi-tool just isn't long enough. On this particular trip, I knew that might be the case, so I brought along a shop tool with me. Another tip which we've learned the hard way as well is to make sure your pedals are kind of pre-loosened. If the last time you've touched your pedal is when a bike shop worked on it, oftentimes they really torque it down and it's hard to get it off with multi-tools on the road. That happened recently on this trip. The bike shop uh, installed some new cranks and, and reinstalled her pedals and it was cl clearly by the torque involved. Uh, they used a long wrench and I could not get it off with a multi-tool. So I had to bring it to another shop which had a longer wrench and they could break it open. I then reattached it to a torque spec which is a little bit easier to get off with simple tools like this. All, all that to say that there is no reason to he-man your pedal onto your cranks. Make sure you can get it off with the torque uh, that you can apply with the tools that you're gonna have with you because there's nothing worse than you know, scrambling to disassemble your bike, looking for a hammer or something, trying to break your pedal loose. An another big tip is if you're using a case where you're removing your fork, uh, make sure all your spacers and bearings are secure. I had a little bit of a freak out uh, on this trip when I was assembling my bike because although I had all my spacers on the steer tube, I left the bearings in the bearing cups in the headset and they weren't secured and the top bearing uh, came loose. So when assembling my bike, I spent a frantic 20 minutes uh, looking for it in the case. I had a fear that the TSA agent opened up the case and somehow, uh, you know, my bearing came out, rolled on the floor and they didn't bother putting it back in there. All that to say is secure all the spacers on your fork or use some zip ties and run it through the head tube to make sure all the bearings stay in place. The next tip is when you put your bike away, make sure you have uh, these plastic stand-ins for a through axle or a quick release, whatever your bike is using. The TSA people probably don't care about your bike as much as you do, and they're gonna be putting heavy stuff on your bike case. What you don't want is your frame or your fork to get compressed. So by having these plastic things, it will ensure that your fork doesn't get squished or your spacing doesn't get messed up in the rear. Usually this comes with new bikes, so it's worth it to call up your local bike shop. Uh, if they're assembling bikes and they have a couple of these laying around, just grab them. The, the next big tip is to use Air tags. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, uh, if you're Android, use whatever is equivalent. I've heard of way too many stories of people whose bikes got lost in transit. And, and while this doesn't do much, if your bike doesn't make it on your plane, by using an air tag or some kind of tracker, it just gives you a little bit more peace of mind uh, to know where your bike is. That said, these are not completely foolproof. On this flight flying over, there's definitely a delay between uh, where my bike was and where it was showing it on the Find My app. So for example, we were just about to taxi on the plane and I tried to figure out where my bike was and it showed that it was still uh, quite a ways away. 
That was last time the AirTag got pinged, but when we got to our destination, it did make the flight. This came in really handy at the airport in Barcelona, however, because we could see it was generally in the luggage area, but you know, it's, a big, it's a big area, we didn't know where it was. And there were actually two areas where they put oversized luggage, and this helped us uh, track it down in that big space. So AirTags, you know, not 100% foolproof, but gives you peace of mind. So uh, next isn't so much a tip, but I did want to show you guys uh, some of the tools I brought with me on this trip. So in our cases, I prefer to remove the rotors on our wheels. So I use this tool. What's nice about this is that it has two different heads that lock onto the two various uh, fasteners that's used to mount a center lock disc brake. This side opens up the center locks where it uses kind of a, a bottom bracket style uh, lock ring. And this side works with free wheels as well as the lock rings that use that kind of style uh, attachment. Like I mentioned, I also brought a three-way tool. What's nice about this is that these, these Allen heads are really long, you get pretty good leverage, and it's generally long enough to access the railer attachment bolts and, and things like that. Another tool I like to bring is a quick link uh, in installation and removal tool. Quick link, since nine speed is uh, really difficult to install and uninstall just using your bare hands. So for me, it pays to have a tool and this one has two sets of prongs, one for installation and one for removal, uh, depending on what you're doing. Not all quick link pliers uh, have this. Some are just for removal only. I find that I still like using a plier for installation because it's real like affirmative click. Speaking of quick links, I brought some spares. I like the KMC ones. Uh, because these are reusable. Supposedly the Shimano and SRAM ones are single use only, which I think is super wasteful. Uh, of course you can reuse them, but they don't recommend it. Another, another thing I have uh, since we do wax our chain is a little drip bottle of the Silka Super Secret. I, I don't have a crock pot set up yet. Uh, so in lieu of that, you can just drip this wax on like you would a petroleum lube and it keeps your chain nice, nice and waxed. So sorry for the sparse studio, we're still getting settled here in Spain. If you're curious about how that transition has been, uh, join us on Patreon. That's where we're keeping the more kind of personal content since this is primarily a bike channel. Hope these tips were useful. If you like this content, uh, you know, pick up some merch from the merch shop. Join us on Patreon and as always, keep the supple side down.